Okay, this is our uh, our last explorer, number six, titled uh, our central question, what is the role of photosynthesis and respiration in the carbon cycle? So we have that here written as our central question. Go ahead and write that down along with the date. Write the reference, Living Earth 2.1.6, and uh, tell me what you know. Okay, hopefully you took a moment to do that. We're going to take this first uh, black title here, the carbon cycle. And um, it's interesting that it's uh, thrown in here with energy for life. Um, but uh, because you're going to cover the carbon cycle in other areas as well. But ultimately, um, we need to take that energy that comes from the sun and we need to change it into a form that's useful for living things. Um, and it all starts with plants through photosynthesis. Plants are autotrophic. They make their own food. So they take that energy and they make it into um, sugar molecules, carbohydrates, um, along with other forms um, such as starches, uh, which are uh, polymers, right? So the carbon cycle, uh, as you can see here in the margin, carbon is essential to life on Earth. Um, it helps make up many of the uh, all the macromolecules that you and I need to survive, to live. Um, so the carbon cycle is a cycle that constantly is cycling carbon uh, throughout all the different spheres. In the atmosphere, uh, it's in a gaseous form, carbon dioxide, uh, generally is what we think about. Uh, but you can have it in solid forms. Uh, carbon uh, can produce things like crystals. Uh, it's found in rock. Um, those are solids, right? Uh, carbon can be found in, uh, in uh, sugar molecules. It can be found uh, in liquid form uh, in the oceans where uh, we find large amounts of carbon as well. So the carbon is constantly moving throughout the environment through these different spheres uh, and it's found in its various forms, solid liquids and gases. Uh, whenever we talk about a large collection of uh, say carbon, um, where do you find those large kinds of storage uh, centers. Uh, well, there's a lot of it in the atmosphere. There's a lot of it in um, jungles, plants across our planet, forests. There's a lot of what we call biomass, and that contains a lot of carbon. So we refer to these as reservoirs. Um, when you hear the word reservoir, you may think of something that uh, has a lot of water, right? Uh, well, fossil fuel deposits, you know, over many years, um, we form oil and gas deposits. These are carbon reservoirs, large storage um, places for uh, carbon. Uh, plants and living organisms, the biomass, are reservoirs of carbon. Oceans contain a lot of uh, carbon and rocks. So these are some examples of reservoirs. Uh, because carbon is constantly cycling, um, we maintain a pretty steady amount of it in the atmosphere. Okay. Just highlight that there. So you got that there. All right. Uh, if you're reading your text, you're going to come across this idea called the fast carbon cycle. Um, they're referring specifically to how carbon, <coughs> excuse me, is cycling through uh, the atmosphere and uh, biomass back and forth. It's a fairly relatively fast process. So, um, and you can see there, it's, uh, it's the, it refers to the exchange of carbon between the atmosphere and the biomass. Biomass is referring to things like uh, plants, like you and myself, uh, animals as well. Okay. So 
how does that happen? Well, this should be review for you. You know that carbon dioxide exists uh, in the atmosphere. It's in its gaseous form. Plants take in the CO2 uh, through their leaves, um, stems, sometimes bark and trunk. Um, they, through a process called photosynthesis, they produce carbohydrates, um, simple sugars, um, solid form, right? Uh, animals will eat the plants, and by eating the plants, they take in the carbon. So it's moved from uh, the atmosphere into plants, into animals. Um, animals, including ourselves, we return that carbon back to the atmosphere when we breathe out. We exhale carbon dioxide. Um, and when we die... Uh, our body decomposes, and some of that carbon will make its way back into the soil, uh, some of it into the atmosphere. Um, so when we exhale that carbon dioxide, when we breathe out, that carbon dioxide is a product of cellular respiration. See, we have to take the, um, the uh, sugars that we consume, the carbohydrates, and we have to uh, break the potential energy. For, we have to break that uh, molecule down to release the energy. And um, then we'll take that energy and convert it into another molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. And that's the preferred form that our body uses to power uh, many of our biological uh, processes. Well... Watch the videos, okay? Um, just to kind of focus on um, identify the things you already know and also be considering the things that are uh, not on the tip of your tongue and really try to commit those to memory. And as we continue to go down there, you can see they kind of have a little schematic there, uh, photosynthesis, and they have a nice video on cellular respiration, okay? Well... Uh, I think that's really it. Um, definitely check these out, okay? And we'll talk to you soon. Oh, do make sure to write down your summary paragraph as well. All right, bye-bye.